newstalkzb.co.nz. First, for breaking news. Well, the Building and Construction Minister, Morris Williamson, says he hopes the police will at least be able to take action against the engineers responsible for the CTV building in Christchurch. The minister is on the phone and joins me now. Good morning to you. Good morning. So basically we've got two engineering bodies who have told you that there is no legal requirement or there's nothing they can do to take action against these engineers. Yeah, I found that very disappointing. I think uh, if you have 115 people lose their lives in a disaster like the CTV building, I think the one thing the public do want to know is that somebody will be held to account. And unfortunately, both of the engineering bodies, uh, CPEC and also IPENS, have both said, short of a few internal and quite minor, which I would categorise as wet bus ticket over the wrist stuff, uh, actions, there's nothing they can actually do. Well, that's the thing. They can't do anything legally. So who can do something? Is our last option now, Minister, the police investigation? Yes, it is. We, 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 I, I made it clear at the time uh, when both the Royal Commission's uh, report came out showing that this building should never have been built and or also our own internal investigation through the Department of Building and Housing said that it wasn't up to the standard of the day and uh, the code of the day. It, it became very clear that I think somebody had to be held to account. Now, I've made the comment up till now, we'll pursue every avenue possible to do so. It seems it came down to finally only two, and one of those now has been closed off because of the professional engineering body saying they can't. It's now in the hands of the police. They are taking their time to work through all of the material, and it's only them now that can make a decision about whether they take a prosecution. The problem is, though, if the country's two top engineering bodies can't do anything, well, what, the, what can the police possibly do then? Well, they, they're totally different. The, the professional engineering things can be more to do with disciplining of members, etc. Uh, the police, with regards to any criminal uh, pursuit, so they might look at corporate manslaughter or whatever like that, uh, they're very different uh, to do with it. But all I can tell you is that I'm meeting with both of the engineering bodies tomorrow. I've called them into my office And if it is that they say there is nothing they can do, I think that's very alarming in the modern world. I think if you had an aeroplane crash and killing 115 people or if you had 115 die from medical misadventure in a hospital, you would want to hold somebody to account for that. Minister, the Institution of Professional Engineers has advised you, although it can't take legal action, it can impose other sanctions. Well, like what, though? Well, they're they're quite minor and quite trivial. I don't think they'd have anything. For example, one of the things they've said is they could name and shame. Well, frankly, I think the name of everybody involved in this entire process has been in the media for long enough for for that not to be an issue. And they might look at sort of uh, temporary deregistration or whatever. What I find interesting is that they have subsequently since the CTV collapse, re-registered a number of the names involved in this. So uh, I, I think the public have got a right. Uh, I don't... It doesn't sit easy with me that when things go wrong, people don't seem to be held to account in this country. Whenever they go right, everyone claims the credit. And I think that if anything might come out of this, we would need to look at strengthening uh, whatever act is involved and putting some teeth into uh, the agency so that they can pursue people who don't act appropriately. So you'll be looking at changing legislation or bringing in some form of legislation to enable some of these professional engineers to be held to account? Yeah, I think just like anything, just like within the aviation sector or the medical sector, I believe that when these people act well and build fantastic things, we should celebrate them and give them all the accolades and all the letters after their name they wish. But I suggest that whenever they foul up and things go really wrong, they should, by the same token, be prepared to accept the accountability for that. And it doesn't, it always seems one sided in this country that everyone takes all the glory and the credit, but they go scurrying for cover when it turns to custard. Minister, what about retrospective legislation? Oh, look, I'm terribly reluctant to do that. The only retrospective legislation I'll ever support is validating something that people had actually always thought existed. I I think it's really wrong if people are labouring today under the laws of the land and think that's what it is, and then in a few years' time the the government decides to change the law, bring it back to cover today, and you found out what you were doing today was then illegal. So I don't think you'd ever get, and I think you get support of the Parliament, and I don't think I'd supported either to retrospectively do it but I think if that's, it's, it's a bit of a, uh, a hollow victory but at least we would at least be putting something in place for the future. So if the Canterbury Earthquakes Royal Commission found the design and the construction of the building 
was deficient eff- effectively. Yes, they did. Isn't that, in your view, Minister, good enough for police to prosecute? Well, it, look, this is a country where the police are completely separate from the politicians, which I think everyone celebrates. We're not Zimbabwe, where the minister mm. calls up and says, I want these people arrested and taken away. So we'll have to wait and let the police independently make that determination. Building and Construction Minister Morris Williamson, thank you so much for your time this morning.